Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. On my first day at work I was left alone in the store, because an employee decided to quit job right away. It was unforgettable. The second story. Woman tries to steal freaking lettuce, and makes such a big fuss we had police come over to arrest her. The third story. Lady paid for a dollar's worth of gas with pennies, and dropped it on the floor while I had my hands out, picked them up and threw them at me and my coworker, and was arrested. The first story is, that time I accidentally took a whole convenience store hostage. This is the most exciting TFR story I've got. This was back in, I want to say 2005, before the proliferation of smartphones, etc. It's about the time I worked at a gas station slash convenience store for one whole day and ended up as a manager in a district manager's worst nightmare. I'd taken the job not two days before and was told to show up at 7 a.m. on a Monday for training. No big deal, right? The manager, TM, certainly seemed stable enough at the time, but I suppose that's what they say about all the crazies. So, I show up at 7 a.m., bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and ready to get to work. I'm immediately introduced to the young lady, YL, who's been tasked with training me by TM. TM spends the first 20 minutes of my shift not training me, but ranting and rambling about how she just worked a double graveyard, and how she's bushed, and how this place just sucks her dry. You get the idea. Then she reiterates that YL's going to be with me all day, training me step by step, and is then gone in a puff of smoke, gone home to get some much deserved sleep, leaves her home number on a scrap of paper behind the counter in case of emergencies only. Sensible enough. So we get down to business. YL's shocked that I'm already somewhat registered and computer literate, and so takes the opportunity to abandon me in the back room doing a few hours of computer training that I gather is supposed to encompass the entirety of my day. When I finish my computer training, I step out into the main store area to be relieved of duty. YL instead informs me that we're now going to do some hands-on training. Weird, but fine, I guess. I mean, I'm not going to scoff at a few extra hours on my paycheck, so whatever. Let's do some hands-on work. The hands-on work goes on for about an hour and a half, bringing my day to about four and a half hours at this point, until YL pulls me aside and announces with a beaming SH eating grin on her face, YL, you know what? I think yeah, I think F this place. C-I-B, F this place? YL, yeah man, F it, it's BS anyway, F everything, I quit. C-I-B, like, in two weeks? YL, like, I mean, like, now. C-I-B, what? With that, she tears off her smock, lights a cigarette, and walks out of the joint, leaving me to mind the store alone. I don't know how to do cash drops. I don't know how to do most of this SH. I've been here for four hours tops. You must be kidding me. YL locks the door to the back room, shoves the key underneath the door, and is gone forever. So, like the nice young man I am, I call TM's emergency number. The phone rings and rings and rings for maybe two minutes straight, before she finally answers mid-snore, with a befuddled, TM, was uh... I promptly explain the situation to her and tell her that I need help. She tells me to hold tight and that she's going to call her assistant manager, AM, to come help. You know where this is going. AM never comes. I'm waiting for another two hours and AM never shows up. I call TM back. Same deal. Two minutes of continuous ringing. She promises something else. Hangs up on me. We go through this process four more times over the course of two more hours when the next person on shift is due to show up anyway. He never shows, naturally, so I call TM until she finally just takes her phone off the hook so I can't call her anymore. This is the part of the story where I start to freak out. I have no other numbers. I know no one else who works here. I'm alone. No way to clock out. No way to hide. No way to lock the doors. Nothing. Just work. Only work. Forever and ever and ever and ever. I can see that this is how I die. I'm sure of it. I'm in a really SH boring version of Final Destination. At this point, I feel the need to call out the dudes who ran the tattoo shop across the street. They'd been coming in for cokes and energy drinks and such throughout the day, and had taken a keen interest in my well-being. They were pretty up on the situation, and kept me reasonably calm throughout the day. They noticed that I was starting to freak out, asked me what the situation was. I explained. Just like that, these bad A's jump into action. They bring me their phone book with all the numbers of the other stores in the area circled and they go to the local taco cart and get me a plate of tacos and a coke to keep my strength up. I'm not into dudes, but I considered asking these guys to marry me then and there. 
Fueled by tacos and sheer unadulterated panic, I start making calls. Other stores are shocked by what's happened, but don't have anyone to spare. They've got no one. But, one of them gives me the district manager's DM home number. Bingo. I explain the situation to him, and listened as he went from perfectly congenial to absolutely terrified. He tells me, DM, I'm coming down there to personally relieve you from your shift. But then he says the perfect combination of words to set me off. DM, but I'm going to need about an hour and a half. Is that okay? Welcome to my breaking point. I begin to shout and shout and shout. CIB, no, that's not all right. Tell you what, DM, either you get down here in half an hour or I'm going to open the cash registers, the safe, turn the gas pumps on unlimited, run and go home. Is that what you want? Free gas and free money for everyone who comes into the store until there's no more money? Is that what you want? DM, I'll be there in 20 minutes. I now see what has happened. I have officially been taken hostage by this store and have taken it hostage in return. I'm now the crazy person in the situation. I'm the movie bad guy. I'm the one making demands. But you know what? He got there in 15 minutes flat. And you know what? He was very nice all said and told. He apologized profusely. Even helped me actually kick in the locked back room door so I could clock out all proper like. It's 10.30 p.m. finally. But then TM in her pajamas, eyes bloodshot and wild, murderous and back from the dead like the last bad guy in Die Hard, comes storming into the store, screaming at DM, who'd apparently gotten her to answer her phone during his trip over. TM. DM, how effing dare you tell me how to run my store? I swear to F you've been telling me what to do for too long, and now I'm telling you for the last time. DM turns to me as TM is shrieking, and he says something that makes me start laughing like a psychotic. DM. Go home, CIB. I've got this. SH, you don't have to tell me twice, amigo. I'm gone. When I get to the door, finally he calls after me and says, DM, I really hope this doesn't affect your future with the company. I never went back. It's so unprofessional of the staff of this D place to leave you alone. I'm glad you quit that job. It's not worth wasting my mental health. After a day like that, the rest of the days at this job would seem pretty easy, but only at another job. I'm not sure what I would have done, but I probably would have also left after a phone call or two. You just got dumped and no one wanted to help you. That district manager seems like a really nice guy, even if he took over your entire shift. Most people in his shoes would have just yelled at the manager and probably told her she was fired if she didn't do her effing job. Although he probably didn't yell at her at the time because she was probably fired because of the circumstances. Though, I don't know. I'd like to see how the conversation between the manager and the DM ended. The second story is, Lady tries to steal and throws a tantrum when confronted, making things worse, ending up in a police car. I work as a cashier slash shift manager in a grocery store. In our store, people need to bring produce to the register, where we will weigh and price it for them, or just scan the item when it is individually priced. One of these items is lettuce, which comes in opaque bags with an open top. A middle-aged lady, we'll call her LL for lettuce lady, loads all of her groceries on the belt, and I start to scan. When I reach for the lettuce, I feel something strange. It turns out lettuce lady had stacked three lettuces inside this bag. When I confronted her, she said she just grabbed the bag from the shelf. So I called in our produce clerk, PC. The conversation went like this. Me to PC. This lady said she found a bag with three lettuces stuffed inside. Isn't that strange? PC. Yes, it is. As lettuces are only sold individually, LL starts to turn red. LL. Classic incoming. I want to speak to your manager immediately. I proudly introduced myself as manager to LL which made matters even worse because she just threw a tantrum a three-year-old would be jealous of. The tantrum started with tearing off the bag with her teeth and throwing the lettuces to the floor, smashing them with her feet. I tell her to calm down, which only works as fuel on her already raging fire. She then starts to throw things from the belt into the store. This was the point where I called in security and told PC to phone the police. This makes her more angry, so when security arrives, she effing spits all over our security guard in my register and tries to punch both me and the guard in the face. The guard eventually manages to tackle LL and keep her immobile until police arrive. She then was arrested. When she was dragged out of the store, she starts to scream things about our customer service all over the place. She ended up in the back of a police car because one, she was too cheap to pay the extra 75 cents for the lettuces, which were on sale anyways. She was too stubborn and self-proud to admit her lame try to steal one of the cheapest items in our store, like any sane adult would do. Yeah, I can see why she was arrested, haha. <laughs> she was behaving inadequately crazy. I've always been fascinated by people who steal cheap stuff. I'm equally fascinated by people who go to great lengths to be bothered by a nickel or less, increase in the price of an item. 
She should have said, oh sorry I didn't know and gone about her day. Everything could have been fine. Or she could have paid. But no, now she has a criminal record for stealing two salads. This is ridiculous. I'm just trying to imagine the feedback she could have left about your customer service. They wouldn't let me steal. And when I got mad and tried to hit the guy, he wouldn't let me. We'll never go back to that place. <laughs> Bravo for calling the police. I'm glad this lunatic got arrested. More crazy customers should be in the back of the police car. I hope this is the worst story you've ever had to tell about working at the grocery store. The last story is... A crazy regular gave me a hard time and her plan backfired. I worked at a small gas station that's connected to a mechanic's lot. We were the first gas station that you see going from upstate, the dense woods, down to the bigger city, so we're always pretty busy. We have our fair share of crazy customers, but this one lived a short walk up the street from the station and always came by asking for a dollar's worth of gas in either her huge gas-guzzling truck or a small gas tank that she would walk over to us. She's done a lot of crazy things to get on our nerves, but this is the one that wins it all. CR, crazy regular, JP, me, CR, hi JP, give me a dollar in the tank. As I'm filling up her small gas tank, I'm noticing she's rummaging her backpack cussing. Here we go. CR, I forgot my wallet at home, so when you're done I'm going to go back and get it. JP, okay you can go back home quick, I'll keep the gas tank in the shop for you when you get back. CR, let me just save myself the trip and take it with me. See where this is going? JP, CR, you know I can't let you do that, and if I were to let you I'd need to write down your license info, and you would be billed to your house for a lot more than a dollar. CR literally screaming like a six-year-old who didn't get her way. Whatever, JP, I'll be back. So I wait about three hours and I take my hour break. Usually I lock myself in the break room type area we have, and as I return she's sitting at the counter arguing with my coworker about how she won't give her money to him and it must be me. Ah, uh, CR. There you are, here. She holds out her cupped hands and I kid you not it was a hundred pennies. I held out my hands to take her payment because I can't say no to any type of payment unless we don't accept it in our system, like cardless pay. And she pulls her hands back and drops the pennies on the floor in front of me and my coworker. And with a disgusting smirk goes, CR. Oh, I'm so sorry, JP. Do you have my gas? Note that a hundred pennies won't fit inside the drawer, and I knew this all along. JP. I don't know what gas you're talking about. Get out of the shop. And honestly, I just wouldn't come back, because we're not going to do business with you anymore. CR, again like a six-year-old. Give me my gas, I paid. JP, well your payment is on the floor and not in our register, so you didn't pay. Leave. As she's picking up the pennies, my coworker is watching over her inside the shop picking up her pennies, so we can put it in the register while cursing and yelling and all that such. As she finishes scraping up the pennies, I go inside after helping someone else at a pump and go to the register. CR, here's your money. So I open the register, look at her in her childlike fury and say, JP, all those pennies won't fit inside the till. Do you have any other form of payment? CR threw the double fistful of pennies at me and continued on with death threats. We had to call the police to remove her from the station. She was arrested and I haven't seen CR again. What a terrible customer. I like that you found a way to deny her payment. I always hate it when people throw money on the counter. It's so awful. I'd probably just take forever collecting her pennies, then counting one for one and intending to forget the bill until she realized I had nothing else to do but screw people while I got paid. Be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and have a good day.